إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد Respect to the brothers and sisters I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gathered us in this masjid to gather us yawm al-qiyamah with Sayyid al-Mursaleen Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم آمين رب العالمين اللهم ارزقنا الإخلاص في القول والعمل. A hadith that we are taught, the first hadith we are ever taught when you are kids or when you ever become a Muslim, the first hadith they teach you. And a hadith that most of us know by heart, the hadith that says, بني الإسلام على خمس. Islam is built on five pillars. We all know the hadith, shahada an la ilaha illallah, the shahada, the salat, <coughs> the zakat, the fasting of Ramadan, and the hajj to Mecca once in a lifetime, whomsoever can afford it physically and financially. Now, this, is, this constitution, Islam, with all its laws and regulations and legislations, is built on these five pillars. In this deen, that anything you could think of has been detailed and discussed. How to treat your wife, how to do business, how to treat your neighbor, how to treat Muslims, how to treat non-Muslims. Everything is detailed. Inheritance, divorce, everything is detailed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala picked these five pillars, these five ibadat to be the pillars of the deen. So they have to be very special. We understand that the shahada, without it you cannot become a Muslim. We understand the salat, it's five times a day. We understand Ramadan, it's once a year, you have to fast in Ramadan. And we, have, we understand the zakat, either you're giving or you're receiving. But hajj, hajj to be a pillar of this deen, while millions of Muslims, millions of Muslims die without performing this ibadah, and they are not sinners. But Allah made it a pillar of this deen. How come? How come a ibadah that millions of Muslims die and do not perform it, and they're not sinners, and even if you perform it, you perform it once in your lifetime, which takes from your 50, 60, or 70 years of age, it takes only two or three weeks of your lifespan, and Allah made it as a pillar of this deen. We all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Hakim. He is the all-wise. And He is the Alim. He is the all-knowing. So there has to be a great hikmah for making hajj this ibadah as a pillar of the deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hajj told us the ayah of the Hajj and in that ayah I want to take just one part of it to discuss what are the benefits of Hajj. 
He said, Subhana, liyashhadu manafi'a lahu. In Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, call the people to come to Hajj, and then He said, so they can witness things that are of benefit to them. What are the benefits that we could get from the Hajj? This great ibadah that's done once in a lifetime, if you can afford it physically and financially. But before we do that, we have to find out and think how much resemblance is between Hajj and the Day of Judgment. This is probably the most important benefit that you could get from the Hajj. That it reminds not only the people going to Hajj, but everyone on every Muslim on earth because everybody knows either a brother or a sister or a neighbor or a cousin going to Hajj and they're gonna come back and tell them the stories. The one of the greatest benefit of Hajj is that it reminds us of Day of Judgment. And remembering Day of the Judgment and if you think about <coughs> The most corruption that's happening on earth, most of the corruption that's happening on earth, most of the problems that are happening on earth is because we forgot that there is a day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, The one who go astray from the path of Allah, they have a severe punishment. Why, Ya Allah? Let's continue the ayah. Because they forgot that there is a day of judgment. Allah is telling us, the one who go astray from his road, from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is going to have a severe punishment because they forgot Yawm al hisab they forgot that there is a day of judgment. Imagine if every Muslim, if every single one of us have the day of judgment right in front of his face all the time. Do you think he will delay his salat? Do you think he will disobey his parents? Do you think he would sell alcohol? Do you think he would gamble and buy lottery? Do you think the sister would take off the hijab? No, one of the main reasons of the problems of this ummah is that we forgot that there is, day of, there is day of judgment. And the Hajj comes every year, once a year, to remind us that there is a day of judgment. Subhanallah, from the moment the Hajj leaves and he collects all that money for all these years and he makes sure everything is halal and he sits down with his family and he tells them, that if I go and I might not come back, this is what you do. Just like somebody's dying, even the clothes that you wear, it reminds a person that about his death you put the two pieces of white cloth on your body, just like they do when, you, when they bury you. Just reminds you of the day of judgment. Subhanallah. And you gather the people and they say goodbye to you. And you say goodbye to them. And you, went to, you go to everybody and you tell them, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I might not come back. If I did anything, please forgive me. You know, subhanallah, everything as if he's preparing himself for the hisab. Everything about the hajj reminds us of the day of judgment. <coughs> In the Hajj itself, when you get there, that a huge number of people gathering at the same spot, at the same time, performing the same manasik, at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a hikmah of that. He could have done, this year is Pakistan, next year is, 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 uh, is Egypt, or August is Lebanon, huh? then Indonesia comes in, uh, in, in March. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a hikmah, has wisdom, why? Everybody has to come at the same time and perform all the masha'ir at the same time. There is a great wisdom behind that. When you go there and you see all that number of people gathering, millions of people gathering at the same place, it also reminds you that there is going to come a day when we gather all next to each other naked. Women and men together waiting for the hisab. And that day... It's not a few hours, that day is 50,000 years. 50,000 years. The Hajj comes every year and reminds us, it reminds us that there is going to be a day when you'll be standing like this, crowded, but you will be waiting for your Hisab. Even the Sa'i, 
Even the sahih between the mountain of Safa and the mountain of Marwa reminds us of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. It reminds us how we will be running from one prophet to another asking him for intercession. Subhanallah. And then until we get to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the people whom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will give us his shafa'a Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. So everything about the Hajj reminds us of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And the biggest dalil, the biggest dalil from the Qur'an, the biggest evidence from the Qur'an that Hajj is a great reminder of Yawm Al-Qiyamah is open the Qur'an to Surah Al-Hajj. Open the Qur'an to Surah Al-Hajj and look at the first ayah. يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد Look at the first ayah of Hajj. Is that a coincidence? The first ayah of Surah Al-Hajj is telling us, O oh mankind, fear Allah. Because the sa'a, yawm al-qiyamah, is a terrible day. The day when the mother, the breastfeeding mother, drops her baby. You are worried now, what are they going to say about me? If I grow my beard, if I put my hijab, if I pray on the street. At that time, the mother will drop her baby, her most beloved thing. She will be dropping him. You will be running away from your father. From your kids, from your mother, you'll be running away. 50,000 years standing in that spot. And every pregnant woman will drop her load. This is how horrible is that day. And you look at the people and you think they're drunk. This is an image that who is giving us this image? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's telling us, you look at the people and you think they're drunk, but they are not drunk. Just because of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe. The hajj comes every year to remind us when we gather at that place, to remind us of yawm al-qiyamah, to remind us that there's going to be a day when we stand and waiting. Are we going to get our book in our right hand? Or are we going to get it in our left hand? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people who will get the book with the right hand. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Qulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah, astaghfiruhu, innahu al-ghafuru rahim Bismillahi wahdah, wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'dah. One of the greatest things, greatest benefits of Hajj is that when you go over there and you see the poor man standing next to the king, next to the president, next to the rich businessman, all standing in the same line, no difference. You tell, look at them, you cannot tell anything. All wearing the same clothing, subhanallah. That shows us the great unity of the Muslims. That reminds us that we should be united. There should be no difference. Huh? This is our, one of our diseases. We look at each other. Are you a Pakistani? Are you a Bengali? Are you a Arabi? Are you a Turkey? Are you this? Are you that? Subhanallah. When we go to Hajj every year, it reminds us, Akramakum indallahi atqakum. The best of you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not the black one, is not the American one, is not the African one, is not the Arabi one, is not the... It is the one with the most taqwa. You have most taqwa? You are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Hajj comes and reminds us this every single year. One of the greatest benefits of Hajj, which is probably the, the main reason that everybody goes to Hajj, is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he promised us that when you go to Hajj, you would come back as born, newborn baby. Look at the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You go on a trip 
for one week or 10 days of your whole entire life and you come back all the steady 40 50 years of sins all gone if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the Hajj from you look at that opportunity my brother who can afford it physically and financially what are you waiting for what are you waiting for if you have the money and you have the health what are you waiting for do you know that if you have the money and you have the health and you do not go to Hajj you are committing a major sin a major sin the shaitan comes and reminds you the daughter's marriage the kids college this this and that but there's priorities in life ya there are priorities in life if you can afford it do not hesitate one second immediately because you never know if you're gonna make it to the next season you never know <coughs> one of the greatest benefits of Hajj is that it trains you to be a slave why do we make seven rounds around the Kaaba? Why not nine? We listen and we obey. Why would he throw these stones have to be picked up from this certain place and thrown at a certain time, at a certain place? Why? Why do I have to go seven times between the side, between the uh, Safa and Marwa? Why? We listen and we obey. It teaches you to be a slave. Why am I wearing these clothes? We listen and we obey. This is a great lesson. So when you come back from Hajj and you see the contract with riba, you say, no, when you come back from Hajj and you see the haram, you say, no, I'm not going to touch it. You get trained to say, I listen and I obey. One of the greatest lessons of Hajj is that it teaches Sami'na wa ata'na. Listen and obey. It might not make any sense for you. Why am I throwing stones at a, at, a, at a stone? Subhanallah. Slave. It reminds you that you are a slave. The master said that, you do that. Whether it makes sense to you, does not make sense to you, you do that. So when you come back from Hajj, Allah said, do not deal with this. Sami'na wa ata'na. Allah said, pray on time. I pray on time. One sister before we go to Hajj, few years ago she called me uh, you know how we call each other forgive me this and that to the sister inshallah hopefully uh, when you come back you will put the hijab ah uh, brother this is a ibadah and this is a ibadah don't start from now ya akhti my sister before you go you're already making the intention that i am when i come back i'm going to disobey allah why don't you make an intention that inshallah ta'ala I will put the hijab you're gonna be in the best place on earth ask Allah to help you and make it easy for you to put the hijab you're going before pre-intention that I am gonna come back and disobey Allah make the intention that ya Allah help me and it applies to all of us in whatever thing that we are disobeying Allah with Wallahi the sister has the most beautiful hijab till this day from six years till now Wallahi because she went and she changed all her intention Subhanallah so make the intention before you go to Hajj ya akhi, that I, I want to come back as a really really a newborn baby <coughs> one of the greatest thing about Hajj is that it reminds us that we have a 24 hour enemy that we have to be aware of the shaitan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared him as our enemy. But unfortunately, we feed him every day. We give him a place of sleep every single day. Every single day. Just because we forget to say Bismillah before we eat. Or Bismillah before we enter the house. He comes and he stays and he sleeps. And he is. Imagine you're feeding and giving a place to sleep for your worst enemy. When we go to Hajj, it reminds us that you have an enemy. He wants to drag you and everyone to hell with him. So be aware. And when we come back from Hajj, inshallah ta'ala, when you come back, you remember that I have an enemy. He is whispering in my ears all the time. He's giving me those wrong ideas. <coughs> One of the greatest lessons, manafi' of the Hajj, is that it teaches the Muslim that Ya Allah, I'm ready to sacrifice anything for you. This eight, seven, nine thousand dollars that I'm spending, Ya Allah, that's a lot of money for me. But for your cause, Ya Allah, I don't care. I'm ready to sacrifice myself, my time, and my money for your pleasure. 
It teaches Muslims how to sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he come back, he's ready to sacrifice that haram job. So when he come back, he's ready to sacrifice anything that disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> and one of the greatest things that will make us benefit from the Hajj, ya akhwan, is to teach us how to be patient. Patience. Hajj is all about patience. When you go there, the brother promised you with one, two, three, four, five, and you go there and you find one, two. And the rest are not there, not because of them, but because of issues that happened over there. You go there, they promised you with this room here, you find another room. Be patient. They promised you with, with, with shrimps and you get chicken. Be patient. They promised you with the, with, the, with the air conditioned bus and you got bus with, with fans. Be patient. Patience, Hajj is all about patience. It's all about patience. So when you come back, you will be patient on your wife. You will be patient on your children. You will be patient on your employees. This is how Hajj comes and teaches us every single year. It reminds us not only the Hajjaj, but every Muslim. When the Hajj comes back and discusses with his brothers and sisters what happened at Hajj, it brings back all those feelings to every Muslim on earth. This is the wisdom, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this ibadah as a pillar of the deen, pillar of the deen, even though most, a lot of Muslims cannot afford to do it or die without performing it. Now, for the rest of us who are not going to Hajj this year, there are the 10 days of the Hijjah. 10 days, the first 10 days of the Hijjah. Struggle and strive and work very hard. These are, Rasulullah said, ما من أيام العمل الصالح أحب إلى الله. There are no days in the year that the amal, the righteous deed, are more beloved to Allah than actions done in the first 10 days of the Hijjah. So, ya akhwan, Ramadan was just around the corner. Remember the days we spend it here all night praying and fasting and reading Quran. Revive all these moments in those 10 days. No amal, no action more beloved to Allah and these, uh, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than actions done on these days. They said, Ya Rasulullah, not even jihad. He said, not even jihad fi sabilillah, except a person who would leave with himself and his wealth and he never comes back. This is the only amal that's better than the amal done on these days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people who listen and obey. And inshallah ta'ala, I ask everybody to forgive me if I did anything wrong. Since inshallah ta'ala, I will be going to Hajj this year. Please forgive me. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all. Allahumma khulana dhunubana wa asrafana fi amrina. Wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma wafiqna lima tuhibbuhu wa tardah. Allahumma ansur al-islam wa a'izz al-muslimin. Allahumma ansur al-islam wa a'izz al-muslimin. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub. Thabbit qulubana ala dinik. Allahumma ya muqallib al- ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وقوموا إلى صلاتكم